All right, fellas, what's going on? We figured we'd hop on here since the mitten returned again and get a couple more drafts in. Maybe we'll get an update on, uh, from Spicy Hot how our other drafts that we did um, uh, ended up turning out. I think he said oh, he's going to give me a thumbs down in the backseat. So they did not advance any of them. None of them. None of them None? advanced. That's unfortunate. Damn. I think we did build out some cool like builds like philosophically. I guess they just weren't executed perfectly. But I think we, we did have a team sniped. that was... Uh, that we had a Chiefs Eagles Super Bowl that was like we needed to hit the nuts in the first round that obviously didn't end up happening because we didn't probably have like Metcalf or Purdy or any of those dudes that went off in that first round uh, matchup. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll get into some of these drafts. I'll get uh, Spicy Hots on the screen here. Feel free to ask any questions, any comments as we go through Dynasty redraft. You know, personal live related. We'll answer them. <laughs> yes, sir. I just uh, get those rolling. Let's ride. Yeah, so let's hop into uh, one of these mitten returns again drafts here. Um, for those of you guys that are unfamiliar, these are playoff best ball drafts. Uh, initially, these were for the like first, the wild card round, divisional round, um, championship round, and for the Super Bowl. But now the that the wild card round has passed, they reboot these tournaments basically just divisional round on, and it becomes a lot harder, a lot more challenging to build out unique teams. Obviously, because there's way less teams involved. Uh, Spicy, if you want to zoom out like two two spots there, that'd be ideal if you can. I swear every time we get into these drafts, we get into a same draft with The Source and uh, Jay Rich, it feels like. Yeah, I've been in draft a couple drafts with Bring the Noise too. Oh, yeah. Got a shield. Should be interesting. Also, uh, it's funny to me how um, how high the ADP is of all of the AFC quarterbacks. Because the alert to taking them that high, I would say, was that we we had more you know ambiguity, obviously going in on the NFC side compared to the AFC. So I feel or uh, ambiguity in terms of like who's going to produce the most points in the first weekend. So now that we're in a situation, we need to take stands because we can't just say, hey, listen, you know, KC, Buffalo, you know, Cincinnati, like they're all going within the first six picks with uh, their builds, obviously with Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, and Josh Allen. So. Uh, you're going to need to stand one of them. And uh, I feel like it's going to be easier to get your own stacks because more people are going to be focused on focused on stacking in this tournament as opposed to the original mitt. Yeah, so I'd imagine okay, we don't have the concerns, obviously, now with Mahomes and Hurts having a bye week. So our stance would be either to take a quarterback like Joe Burrow or to go with a guy like Christian McCaffrey. Hope that the San Francisco 49ers make the Super Bowl. I personally uh, think we should go uh, McCaffrey personally, but I I'm cool with either one. Uh, it's just, I don't want to reach on Purdy and like, you could still, you could still build San Francisco, but getting the elite quarterback, I think is more valuable, uh, Burrow sure. over Purdy than, uh, you know, McCaffrey over Mixon. That's just how I view it. That's fair. Uh -huh. Okay. So we grab Burrow there. Hopefully, I mean, it's no guarantee that Chase falls back to us. Knowing that we have Burrow, there's less incentive for people to take Jamar Chase. They're probably going to be looking for their Kelsey's, their Diggs, their AJ Browns given that they drafted those elite quarterbacks there. I'm sorry, but uh, where are all the Cowboys in ADP? <laughs> oh, God. Here comes Danny with the Cowboys. I, I'm, I'm not even trying to troll, but like, Brock look. Brock just went seventh overall, so that's dope. Crazy. Yeah, Lamb's eight. Also that, not the insane. guy that took McCaffrey, so I'd be a little or, bit fuming if I was the guy that took right. McCaffrey. Like, but but Bush, I understand like favoring the favorites like because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Like, the teams that are going to advance the Super Bowl, but... There shouldn't be that much of a discrepancy between one team and another team when the spread between them is three and a half points. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so yeah, we go chase, chase here. Yeah. Pretty easy pick. Easy. Um, in terms of an NFC contender, so obviously by drafting the Cincinnati Bengals, we are making the bet against the Kansas City Chiefs making the Super Bowl, against mm -hmm. the Buffalo Bills making the Super Bowl because they put the Bills this week. So obviously we are looking to, if we build out Maybe a contrarian stack. We could always go with like maybe a Jags potentially if we get a Jags um, uh, Bengals. I would NFC stick to the NFC, NFC side. Championship. But I would, yeah, like Danny said, I would stick to the NFC side. Hopefully we build out, we can maybe build out like a, a Bengals Eagles maybe if we get Devontae Smith to fall here or maybe a Bengals 49ers, 49ers. Kittle falls here. Uh, Kittle falls here. Um, we have some options. We could also go Bengals Cowboys, of course, with, with CeeDee yeah. Lamb on the board there too. A lot of options. Uh, any of them really work here. Um, it's pretty remarkable how low CD Lamb's ADP is, though, honestly. Uh, 18. But uh, I'm down. I kind of like the idea. If Smith falls, I think we should take Smith. I, I like that. I like that. Wise, I think it would be 
Uh, Sanders just went, so that makes it uh, a little bit more difficult now. now. Do we want to change now and go 49ers? Because we know that guy's going to probably be targeting the same stack as us. Like, okay, what, so what is Higgins bringing the noise went, so We can't even grab Higgins. Did, is Mixon on the board? I, I don't mind grabbing Smith here and then going yeah. with Mixon with our next pick and then building out a building out a he, Bengals. Take Eagle. the Niner because he's got all Eagles and he's going to snipe us throughout. Yeah, that's that's my opinion. Yeah, good idea. Um, Yeah, take the Niner or the Cowboy, I would say. But, I mean, the Niner works here. Get some texture. Yeah, uh, hopefully we can grab uh, a Uke with our next pick and then um, maybe Mitchell late on. Uh, as like a running back, we we will need to grab a, a Bengal. Actually, probably a running back. We probably need to prioritize Mixon over Ayuk if we if we get the opportunity. Uh, I would agree with that as well. Um, also, I think Elijah Mitchell is pretty much a lock for this build. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so in this position, do you want to go? Do you want to go Mixon, Mixon or do you want to go Ayuk? I think we probably Mixon. have to go Mixon. Just get a, Mixon. a stable running back for our stack here. Mixon for sure. And I mean, there's still the off chance that Ayuk maybe falls back. They'll bring the noise. Might be contesting that. Uh, if I'm bringing the noise though, and you have that much Philadelphia, you should be drafting Dallas, Dallas Goddard here, but um, we'll see what he does. Yeah. The tough thing with these tournaments, right? Because like I said, this is now in the second round of the playoffs. There's only eight teams remaining. There's only so many ways you can build out these teams, right? So you don't want to, you know, necessarily build out bone stock, follow ADP, the same exact team that everybody else is going to build when they build out the Bengals. Cause I don't think mix and burrow chase is going to be unique in any way. I'm sure anybody who drafted burrow probably, you know, 70% of the time comes up with those two players as well. So we got to find ways to get unique in terms of like our one-offs, I would say as well. If we deviate yep. from our primary stacks for like a Tony Pollard here, I think that would make a lot of sense. Uh, uh, and the only, that, I guess we have 49ers. So that may yeah, be not the best that, idea, but we could deviate for Isaiah Pacheco who wouldn't, you know, theoretically see the, uh, the Bengals until the AFC championship. I don't mind that. I don't mind uh Pacheco or maybe even Tony because uh Hardman is a, a expected to miss this game, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. So I don't, I don't even mind mixing in a Tony here. Uh, Tony could be uh, interesting. Yeah. I like, I like uh, going with Tony in terms of Super Bowl matchup. We will need another 49er. So hopefully Mitchell, Mitchell. falls back to us here. And, and um, because bring the noise doesn't pick uh, between us. Uh, we should have a decent chance, but I mean, Elijah Mitchell is going to be a lock there. You get texture to the CMC teams taking him early. And then even if CMC doesn't get hurt, you're still getting a guy who's showed that whenever he's healthy, can be involved in this offense. So, he uh, went, Jay, so Jay Rich, uh, let me, does this guy have any Niners? Uh, can you check? I think he does. Actually? I think he has um, McCaffrey or Purdy. Yeah, he has Purdy. Oh, okay. So. so stacking Purdy and Elijah Mitchell, that's really nice. Yeah, that's gross. Um, Boyd obviously fits our team too. So hopefully yeah, Boyd falls back smash. to us. Um, we're like just overstacking the 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 Ford or the Bengals, and you know I actually don't mind this because now it opens you up to potentially. We can take a uh, late round shot on a 49ers receiver like yeah. a Dar like a Danny Gray or a Juwan Jennings or something like that. We uh, could always grab later Boyd on Boyd for sure here. Yeah, we have to go uh, Boyd. I think. Yeah, I mean we could go ETN as a one off and hope that uh, you know the Bengal the the Jaguars even if they don't beat the Chiefs we get a. a big performance out of ETN at the very least to help us kind of advance this team if we needed to, but God, I can um, already tell if I was in Buffalo, how many Cowboys teams I'd be building based off this ridiculous ADP. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to throw, you know, advance rates out the window now that there's no bye weeks, but I still think they're important, right? Like people are going to, what I mean by that is they're going to overstack their teams, right? They're just going to be like, I'm going to draft six Bengals and four Cowboys, and I'm not going to draft a single player from other teams, but Rarely is that going to be the case where you advance a team with like just exposure to two games, because if those or uh, yeah, if those two games yeah. don't shoot out or whatever, and we get a big shootout in the team That's... that you didn't stack, then it's possible that if you drafted a one off Ezekiel Elliott or one off, you know, uh, Travis Etienne or something like that, that that team helps you advance. And then the rest of the teams that did overstack, you know, only Bengals and Cowboys, for example, their teams are dead because they weren't able to advance them. For sure. It does leave us really, really naked here. I uh, kind of like the idea of help. taking Zeke here. I don't mind that at all. It's a, um, it's a good one-off. He could have a, a big performance, even if the 49ers lose, or it also kind of um, leaves the opportunity that if back the Cowboys. Cowboys and Bengals make the Super Bowl, then we could also stack up Cowboys Bengals too. Yeah. Cause although we did invest high pick in uh, George Kittle, theoretically Kittle has a really good game against Dallas. Uh, it's a shootout game. You end up back during, you know, Zeke and Gallup, uh, they get you through. And yeah, from there on, you, who knows what happens, right? Yeah, we don't like I said, you don't want to theoretically just think of the Super Bowl matchup. You also think of how you want to get to the Super Bowl too. So you want to yeah, be able exactly. to roster, you know, five, six, seven players at least in the Super Bowl matchup, but you also want to make sure that your team isn't dead in the first round as well. Um 
let's get through some comments or you know after our pick right we we, we still have a, a pick here um yeah. how about them cowboys big 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 dub for sure um yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean everybody's roasting the light mode i mean i uh here we can make our pick uh you thinking hayden hurst here or maybe uh maybe we can deviate a little bit um i I'm like thinking, uh what about like hurst and uh p Ryan? So that way you can advance Mixon hypothetically, and then in the Super Bowl, like if he got nicked up and P. Ryan had a couple touchdowns, and that gives you some leverage on the field. I was gonna say Hurst is probably the play, or Jennings maybe would also be interesting. I don't mind that either. Yeah, I like. Yeah, let's go with Hurst here with this pick, and then we'd be really we you know, need a I guess running back. The bet that that the Bengals, if they make the Super Bowl, win it and probably score a lot of points in the process. I would say we probably need to grab an NFC player, whether it's a Bengal or a Cowboy. Um, with our next pick, hopefully Jennings can fall back to us, but it's possible that he goes here with, uh, I think bring the noise has, has some 49ers if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, he's, he's, he was the reason why our, our team isn't as good as it could have been. Um, um, but yeah, let, let, let me add back to that. Right. Cause I was talking about it, but the, the discrepancy in some of the ADPs is definitely a lot of value right now. Cause, uh, for the most part, people, I understand if people were fading a lot of Cowboys, uh, in the wild card round, right. Cause you don't know how this team's going to look. And like, there was a realistic chance that they could have played Tampa and looked completely flat and look, you know, struggling on defense. Like they were at the end of the year and lost also. Exactly. But that's what I'm saying. Like they, they struggled, they lost the team wasn't clicking, but now we got more of a sample that it looks like they're, they're starting to click. It looks like they're, they're on both sides of the ball looking better. This is a three and a half point spread game against a rookie seventh round quarterback. So the market's already thinking like this is a very, very close game. And yet you're seeing the discrepancy in ADP where, you know, Purdy and the other Niners are going in the top 20 and outside of CD Lamb, every other Cowboy is going like tw pick 25 and later. Like, I, yeah. I just think that's way too sharp. Way, way, like way too sharp of a, of a, a fucking, how do I, I'm not sharp. Uh, yeah. Discrepancy. Yeah. Wide, wide of a discrepancy. Wide yeah. of a discrepancy. Yeah. So, okay. So our team, I would say as far as like running backs are concerned, we, pr I, I think we're fine with the two running backs we have. I don't think we really need to draft another one here. Um, we could go with a guy like Clyde as a one-off potentially. I don't mind that. Hopefully or we could go with a, a Giants player as a one-off too, because we're, we don't have really any exposure to that game. And if that game shoots out, it might screw our team because we don't have any exposure to that game. We could grab like a Richie James or a Darius Slayton. Slayton works. I like, yeah, Slayton. I'd say Slayton's a good one off to have. He's, you know, the deep threat of that offense at the top there. Spicy. Oh, spicy. Oh, no. Okay. It auto picked okay. us the Slayton. <laughs> anyway, we're good. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on Pete Ryan? If he falls too? Cause I, I do like that, that, that texture of, of mixing, getting you to the Super Bowl, And then if anything happened to mix and you have a, a guy like P Ryan who can potentially, you know, score a couple a, touchdowns a touchdown game in the super bowl or something yeah that's that's interesting i think we already have so many Bengals that i'm be way more that's inclined fair. to take a 49er or a, a cowboys player like can you uh sort well, by 49ers real quick i just want to see who else is well, left now that we full faded niners what about like jordan mason in case anything happened to mccaffrey yeah or use use check is kind of interesting too i'd rather mason because like you got more implied uh, value there if anything were to happen you do but i think use check has the opportunity to just catch two touchdowns randomly because he's involved in the offense regardless of injury i don't know how uh, the other thing too is is ty uh, ty hilton literally just went i was literally about to say is ty hilton still on the board I'll i vote use check that's my vote you can I, take I'm mason, voting mason but it's spicy yeah go for it I think I think use check is interesting, man. He's got a he's got an interesting role in the offense. Who's to say he doesn't have like a random forty yard screen pass for a touchdown in the Super Bowl? Yeah, uh, yeah, in the Super Bowl, man. He's a good player. Yeah, uh, me too. Smooth. Uh, have one hundred one and one hundred four in the rookie draft. Should I consider quarterback at four when I already have Watson and Lamar? I think you should consider whoever the best player available is at four. Eh? Um, I agree. Yeah, you should just always be taking the best player available. At, at QB at four, even if you don't make that selection, or if you do make that selection, you eventually move off of, let's say it's Stroud or Young or Levis or something like that, um, then you're still going to be at a spot where you drafted the player that has the highest value. So you're 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 always going to be looking for that regardless, even if you don't need a quarterback. And again, I would suggest if you don't need a, a quarterback to shop that pick, leverage it, maybe for like the 107 in a second or something like that, go down and get yourself a, you know, a running back or a... Uh, a wide receiver. Um, 
What is the most you'd pay for Danny Dimes and Superflex rebuild? Uh, I'm more than uh, more than comfortable paying a one eleven in Algier. Yeah, more that's a that's about the price range though. Like, I don't know if I'd go much more than that. I think that's pretty fair. But well, uh, I the offer I made because uh, I was actually I had a ton of picks. And I'm like, you know what? If I can get you know Danny Dimes for a reasonable price, I'll do so. Uh, I ended up offering. I think it was one oh one oh nine or no no it was one eleven two oh seven and Baker Mayfield for uh for Daniel Jones and I, I was comfortable giving that up. Yeah, that's I I would probably equate that about to the same as one eleven Algier right like that's yeah Algier's worth a little bit more than the two oh seven I would say probably like the two oh four kind of area so mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield yeah yeah Baker Mayfield difference there so yeah I think that that's pretty fair. Uh, I sent the picks uh, in the group chat, but our closest to advance was three points away, oh, but yeah. it was a team which, oh God, my eyes. Uh, don't talk bad about my seventh round rookie. Go Niners. No, I'm not talking bad about him. The only thing I have a problem with is that the media is just so quick to, you know, put him up into the stratosphere when at the end of the day here, like, first of all, I mean, Shanahan is probably the best offensive coach we've seen in quite a while. Like he's phenomenal in terms of his scheme. Uh, in terms of like any quarterback he can put into that system has like a top five EPA, which is ridiculous. Um, but second, like the problem that I have with Purdy is, you know, he's good. He can move. Shown he's, you know, semi-accurate, can manage the offense. But when he faces a team that can rush the passer, like the Cowboys, like the Eagles will, if he were to hypothetically make the Super Bowl, I want to see how he handles that because he hasn't faced a team with a, a really, really good pass rush. I mean, you mentioned Tampa Bay. They Ever since Shaq Barrett went down, they have had a negative pass rush. Seattle yeah, doesn't have a pass rush. Like, realistically, what team has he played? Even Miami, wasn't that like right when they got Bradley Chubb or right yeah, before I mean, they got they, Bradley they Chubb? Yeah, I mean, they theoretically have a decent pass rush. Yeah, one, defense isn't anything one rusher. Crazy. Yeah, and their yeah. secondary isn't even comparable. So The other, I, the other thing, too, is that he hasn't really had to play from behind either because they've been winning the all these games. Right, like if, if the Cowboys, hypothetically, uh, first of all, I, I, I want to defer in this game. Uh, I, I want to get after him early, get in his head early, and then maybe when Dak gets the ball back, uh, potentially, you know, put up seven, see how he responds there. Uh, by the way, defer is always the answer if you have the choice on kickoff, in my opinion. But um, yeah. especially in this type of atmosphere, you want to put Purdy out there first, let him make a mistake, let him get in his own head. And then obviously on the other side, Dak is coming at you. And I mean, anytime you have a, an elite quarterback on the other end, potentially putting up points, it's definitely a, a big um hurdle if you will for for a rookie quarterback like for example even in 2016 after we had a great year uh we played against Aaron Rodgers and I'll tell you what anytime we didn't have the ball I was fucking scared yeah that's fair right, so. um you can enter another draft there spicy again if you guys uh, we haven't plugged this yet but if you want to join in on the draft feel free go uh over to underdog fantasy the mitten returns again is the contest that we're doing it's a five dollar entry a lot of fun uh ways to get some bullets in the chamber for these drafts yeah. and of course if you don't have an underdog account use promo code FSE but yeah you can hit the uh yes there and then uh we as uh brock says bush you beat my one gauntlet team if iu catches that touchdown i would have won um on the bright side that team you advance is cracked and could make a run so the team he's actually referring to is this team that i talked to you about danny it's um quarterback i have dak prescott running backs ezekiel elliott devin singletary travis Etienne. uh wide receiver slash tight end is kelsey cd lamb juju schmischuster dalton schultz isaiah mckenzie and Kadarius tony so essentially structurally it's a dallas four stack with pretty premium guys with Prescott, Elliott, Lamb, and Dalton Schultz with a Kansas City three stack of pass catchers, Kelsey, Juju, and Kadarius Toney. And then a two stack of Buffalo Bills with Devin Singletary and Isaiah McKenzie. And then a one-off Travis Etienne. Yeah, so no. it's a pretty good it's a pretty good team. I, I agree. I think the team that I I beat is, uh, yeah, he said it's the Chiefs Cowboys team. Yeah, that's the, the team I have. It's a four, a four by three Chiefs Cowboys. By, by the way, uh, it's going to be, I feel like the, Am I crazy to say that the 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 way I want to approach these drafts is uh, getting my NFC quarterback uh, rather than building through my AFC quarterback? I would say that's probably not. The, I mean, if the field if the field believes that you know the AFC side of things will be the higher scoring, which thing, they which will, look like they will, because the the quarterbacks are going really high in ADP, and it's it doesn't play out that way, then obviously that's going to nuke so many people's teams. Because if you get a, a middling Mahomes, Allen, and burrow type of game where it's defensive touchdowns that you know randomly sprinkle in offensive you know uh touchdowns via the run game or whatever then um it's possible that those guys disappoint but i i personally would like to 
I just I think the the Mahomes Allen way is still is still smart and trying like, to get different in other places. Well, see, th- this is what what I was referring to, right? Because now we're on the board. Yeah, we're on right the clock. Now, right, we should I, probably make this back. I, I like Burrow a ton, but what I'm thinking here theoretically is you have you know access to maybe a Travis Kelsey, and then maybe you could start building out your your Cowboy or Forty Nine or on the other end. Or yeah, you I'm, I'm down to go uh, star Kelsey here. I, I think Kelsey's a Kelsey. good pick. Um, it's really interesting because I I, th- I think the like again like I mentioned it, but like the Cowboys are a nice leverage point where they have if they were to go on a berserker like you've mentioned even with Tampa Bay, like they have a lot of value relative to the field. Okay, you have so a player that can. Sorry, we're on the board again. Do we want to take? We could potentially fiddle around with a one-off digs here. Because they're not going to see each that. other until the AFC Championship anyway. Or we could take a one-off uh, AJ McKinnon. Brown too. And because the Cowboys and uh, Eagles are not going to see each other until the AFC Championship. So I'm cool with um, either guy. Let's go Brown. Uh, whatever you want. Let's go Brown. It's more likely he advances. Fair. Yeah, we also have an out then too. Oh. No, no, he got it. We're good. Okay, he got it. Um, All right. So it's I mean, also more, we have an out then too on the uh, NFC side of things. If we somehow, I guess we wouldn't have a quarterback for Kelsey. So never mind. But um yeah, so we have uh, Kelsey and AJ Brown so far. Uh, we're gonna need to get a running back of some kind. I would say Sanders, Pollard, and those guys are gonna need to be kind of priority for us. Yep, uh, I, w- I would say any of them. I think if CD Lamb falls, that's obviously you know the the proper pick there because if the Cowboys were to go on a run, uh, you know that guy's gonna be consistently involved. Uh, uh, and, and the source now. so um, takes him. Okay. Spicy, if you want to star. Dak and Sanders and some of these guys that we want here, just because I'm stressing out about getting auto pick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we also maybe want to mix in some more Chiefs as well too. Juju. Uh, I mean, like Dak's ADP is low enough, and like, oh, we would want Pollard on this team. I would say one of Juju or Sanders and Pollard for sure. I think we should go Sanders cuz there's a lot of like low end pass catchers that we can grab. So I'd say let's go Sanders here. I like that. And then uh we'll just we'll grab Hardman and shit later. We don't really need to prioritize and, Juju, I don't think. And Sanders theoretically is going to be really good for advance rate and a And do we want to we York. probably should take Prescott here so that I, I say Pollard. Take, I say Pollard. I think the the Lamb guy takes oh. him guaranteed if we don't take oh. Prescott. And it'll fuck us way harder if we if we just but defer I, to Zeke. Yeah, I mean, uh, his ADP is twenty seven. You're getting him at twenty. You're reaching. A he's gonna go. Though, he's gonna go if we don't pick him. Yeah, I mean, let's see what see who that guy took. Uh, it was the source, right? Yeah, see but he that, has two picks he, before it, we pick. He's a quarterback, he though. He's a quarterback. He's a quarterback. Yeah, he's a quarterback. Yeah, that's no, fair. Okay, all right, we'll risk it. Let's risk it. Let's go Pollard. Yeah, uh, he if he has a quarterback, I'm, yeah, I'm doing that hundred percent. All um, right, we'll see how it goes because we might be screwed here if we if he doesn't. Uh, we'll have to st- like backdoor the Jags or something. And if, I feel uh, like or not the Jags. I, the um, who would we backdoor here? But at the end of the day, you have to draft uh, thinking that you have to hit the nuts. And uh, right, right, we're pretty point, much so. boned if if this doesn't hit. We'd have to basically backdoor the Jags and hope that Kelsey gives us a one off game. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, we're we're looking pretty uh pretty bright here. Kind of sucks that guy was on the board. board too, which is pretty crazy. I think he just went. Um, also, oddly enough, I, I think it was much more likely he would have taken Pollard than Dak there, 100 percent with with Mahomes already in town. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely more likely he would have taken Pollard, but he could still take Prescott here. We've seen people just take two QB builds. He might be like, oh, Tony. it might be smart for me to just load up on quarterback. He's also just taking Chiefs Tony so much, which is annoying. And Schultz, yeah, okay, that, that's doable. Now we can go with Prescott and uh, Gallup. We're or gonna. Something. Gallup TY. Of course, the one draft we're in that we're building Cowboys, uh, we see a Cowboy go high and ruin our build. Yeah, I don't think Lamb typically goes that high. He went, what, at 13? He usually goes like 18, 18 or something. That's his like ADP. That. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Pacheco would have been kind of interesting for our build, too. Oh, you're the Sorth Smooth? Why did you stack? Oh, why did you snipe us on Lamb? Yikes. That makes sense. Oh, okay. I didn't know that whole time. <laughs> oh my god, this fucking clown just took no Dak. Shot. Oh my god. Okay, we got to we got to backdoor the take ETN. We got to backdoor the Jags. We, we got to backdoor an a uh, uh, mini advance. Fuck. We the only quarterback left is Lawrence, so we have to. Uh, yeah. Unless we take Daniel Jones. I suppose, what a but. joke! What a sick joke! Yeah, star star Lawrence for us. What a sick joke. Um, 
No, you're 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 good, smooth. Not you. I'm talking about this guy that just sniped us when he already had Josh Allen. So maybe go Christian Kirk here and then go Lawrence with our next pick. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Yeah. We probably have to do that. Jesus Christ, man. That's so annoying. Yeah. Again, the reason we're pivoting like this is because. Do we think the Jags are going to beat the Chiefs? Absolutely no. not. I don't think they're going to beat the Chiefs. But we're, this team is already a burned entry for the most part anyway because we got sniped so many times. At least if we stack the Jags in the off chance that they somehow make a run, then we'd have a very unique build. These people do realize that like taking two quarterbacks early in this format with three games left for the Super Bowl is like just throwing your team out, throwing the entry out. I mean, it's not the one thing I will say is that it's not a total bullshit move considering Dak fell below ADP. If Mahomes has a bad game for whatever reason, let's say like McKinnon rushes a touchdown in, they get a special teams touchdown, you know, Pacheco rushes a touchdown in, we get like a nine point Mahomes like aberration type of game, then every Mahomes team is going to be dead except for that guy's team because he took Prescott. However, the t the guys who built Cowboys chief stack set just simply didn't take two quarterbacks and took Dak instead of Mahomes are going to be living. Right, but if if Mahomes then has two great games to close out the the playoffs so, in the so, AFC Championship in the Super Bowl, then it's possible that that team wins. That's the only scenario in which it the, works, the and it's not something I would scenario. do often. But yeah, we have to go on here. So, uh, yeah, and then um, who else do we want to grab? Can we build out a? So we Jags. have, I guess, an Eagles Jaguar Super Bowl. So we could grab maybe another Eagle. Like Eagle, oh, we already have uh, running backs. So I don't really want to Quez. Grab Quez. We could grab a Quez Watkins here. Yeah. Uh, I like Zay. Jo oh no, Zay Jones. Zay Jones. Zay Jones. Zay Jones better than. Quez oh yeah, Zay sure. Jones for sure. Yeah, Zay I didn't Jones. even notice that. Yeah, grab Zay Jones. Okay. I mean, th th this is doable at least. I mean, theoretically, other than Kelsey, which kind of seems like a burned pick at this point. Like if Kelsey, but if has, Kelsey a has a twenty point game and they lose, then it's fine. Yeah, 100%. Which probably wouldn't happen, but if it does, then we're good. Yeah, what if like it's 41-38 Jaguars and Kelsey has like three touchdowns, you know? Dude, Trevor Lawrence is legend. Good luck trying to trade for Trevor Lawrence in Dynasty if uh, if, if the Jags beat the Chiefs in this game. Oh, it's going to be impossible. Be literally impossible for, for that to happen. I, I, I got a scenario for you. If Trevor Lawrence beats the Chiefs this week, do we think his market value in Dynasty is going to be higher or lower than quarterback four? I think he would be the consensus quarterback four. I think it's exactly where he would sit. I agree. That's probably yeah. where the I think he'd probably happen. be higher than Herbert. He'd probably be higher than Lamar for sure. I mean, he's already kind of higher than Lamar, I would say, for the most part in people's minds. Yeah. Um, the only three uh, you can make the argument, maybe even like somebody would rank them three. I, th I still think you got to take Hertz over him. Like I think like the market will. Yeah. We're talking about well, fantasy football here, not like yeah. what quarterback we would take for the next ten years. So yeah, in fantasy 100%. football, you would definitely take Jalen Hurts over him. Like and again, I agree that the market's going to stick to that, but I still think there's an off chance where if like the Jags won the Super Bowl this year or made the Super Bowl, he sees like a Joe Burrow rise where Joe Burrow was going. Yeah, like Burrow was the QB startups. four last year. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I think we go uh, we go Quez for sure here, probably. Yeah, I like that. Do we Hopefully want to take squad doesn't screw us? Question is, do we want to take a um, a T Y Hilton and hopes for a berserker Eagles Cowboys uh, NFC Championship? Because we have Pollard. Yeah, I'm actually yeah. Let's okay. Well, you just went with Quez. We can go T Y with the next pick. I forgot we had. That's, that, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I, I want to Quez too. Pick. Um, yeah. yeah, hopefully, uh, TY falls here. Cause then if we get, um, you know, a long touchdown of TY and like the divisional round, it could help us advance. Or if we could still build out a Jags Cowboys Super Bowl, I think mathematically, if we have TY Hilton, because then we'd have yeah. Pollard, uh, four Jaguars and, uh, and Hilton. Um, we could probably, I mean, we are already done with this one. Do do we have, they're like 15 minutes long. We could probably low key fit it, fit one more. Yeah. In. Yeah. We can do one more of these. Yeah. Um, I got food on the way. That's the only reason that yeah, you're yeah. saying that. No, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, we can do one more of these. No problem. Uh, so we'll, once this one's out here, let's see the whole team real quick. I just want to see how it ended up working out. All right. So we got, it was the. Holy crap! Wait, the the um, the Bucks uh, fired every single oh, yeah, one of their offensive house, coaches. Yeah, they cleaned house. Good. That's good. Yeah, never mind, Spicy. It's cool. Just go back to the lobby. Imagine you got you guys tank everything down now, and then fucking um, Caleb Williams, twenty twenty four, Loki, trade everyone. Yeah, now. I'd be I'd be more than happy with that. <laughs> yeah.
I'd be happy with May too. Like, honestly, I don't even really care. Um, yeah. So let's, let's enter one more of these. If uh, smooth wants to get in here by all means, get in here again. Yeah. Um, so Brock says, are the Eagles and chiefs super highly priced since their advancement chance is so high? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, mathematically like odds wise, because they have home field advantage they're they're going to be naturally favored in games because they get the, the three point swing that home field gives you, especially given those two environments too. Like it's hard to play in those two stadiums. Um, when they're at home. So I would say, yeah, the, the reason that they're super highly priced is because they're going to be home yeah. field throughout the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which uh, funny enough, did you see that the Super Bowl odds uh, of the NFC have like pretty much like closed in like um, now the, the Niners and the Cowboys basically are viewed as, as equal, if not uh, favored against Philadelphia, if the game were to happen in the NFC championship, specifically the Niners, I believe, which uh, is- Bet the Eagles to win the Super Bowl. I'm telling you right now, it's just a good process bet. Like they're they're like fourth or fifth in odds right now, and they have home field advantage on one side of the conference with with a conference that is the easier path too. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's weird to me that people are like ready to just throw all in on the Niners as the NFC favorite when they would be at Allen at Philadelphia for the NFC Championship. Allen for sure. Yeah, we have to go Allen here. Jesus. Diggs falling would be beautiful. Yeah. I think, see, the tough thing, what are your thoughts on this? Like, if you get Allen, right, on a team, and you don't get Diggs, you're kind of fucked, right? You could build Eagles. You could. I'm just saying, like, in practice, because there's so many of these drafts being done, and you have to figure most of the time Diggs, Allen, stacks are going to be the popular thing. And yeah. if I guess you'd be differentiating semi if like Diggs has a bad game or something like that or a bad couple games in a row here. But I think it, it's really tough when you stack up like Allen Diggs, Hertz Brown, um, you know, Mahomes, Kelsey, because if you don't get that stack, then there's going to be teams that did get it. And you're just inherently at a huge disadvantage if you don't. 100%. Um, by the way, I am praying that PDP ought does not take Stefan Diggs, but it's, yeah. oh, he's got to take Purdy, right? He's got to um, take Purdy. Is Purdy? Yeah, Purdy's ninth he's overall. Got, in that's NBA. insane. Like, why is Purdy ninth overall and Dak's in the 20s? I mean, it's not just because of Dak. It's also because of how high McCaffrey goes. That's fair. Um, Brown here. Uh, hopefully, he does not take Please Diggs. Purdy. Please take Purdy. Please take Purdy. Please take Purdy. Don't, don't, don't be that guy. Uh, he took McCaffrey. He might try and build out a fucking... That's what I'm scared of. He can't, he can't do it, though, because he's not going to get Purdy. He, he's he's not going to get Purdy. Yeah, there we go. Oh, Diggs. Even worse. That was an even dumber pick. Because so now he's going to have two Niners and not get Purdy. Dude, this one... Okay, hear me out. If we don't get sniped on Cowboys, this one can actually hit the nuts. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this is going to be a unique build whatsoever, though. If you get a Bills stack and then you build out Cowboys. like I think that's naturally where people's brains are going to go to because the Cowboys are the cheapest like of the top three teams in the NFC that you can stack. I mean, to be fair, like, it's pretty remarkable that Debo and, and Purdy are so high. And then, yeah, like, I mean, Kittle got, like, taken a little higher now, but, uh, like, they're they're an affordable stack. The key the key for oh, these God. builds. <laughs> yeah, gross. The key for these builds Lamb. is the one-offs, in my opinion, is what one-offs you take. Because if your one-offs hit, then obviously that's going to make your team unique. I like Lamb here. You get we the... have to go Lamb here, but I would be, like, inclined to experiment with, like, if you wanted to go with a Sanders or something like that to get a nice the... one-off. Also, Gabe Davis would be big for our team considering we have a Bill stack, but... Gabe would be nice. So would Dawson Knox. I really like Dawson Knox. I think no- I-, I think if you give me, like, Knox versus Gabe Davis, I think everybody's just going to be gravitated towards Gabe Davis because of what he did in last year's playoffs, but I think... I like kind of Dawson. I like Knox I like, like Knox and Schultz. Remark. It's funny because like out of the 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 ca- the pass catchers on these teams, I think like the ones that are like getting overlooked are the tight ends. I like Knox and I like Schultz a ton. Going, yeah. And he just went. By the way, Gabe Davis. Um. So we're gonna be competing with him for for Bills, which is not ideal. He also. I got hope. I kind of hope one of these top running backs falls to us as a one off. Ideally, Uh, Sanders would be the guy because he's not in the AFC side of things. But I actually don't hate the idea of Mixon having a big game in a loss to the Bills, and he helps you advance. Yeah, I mean, I would rather build the NFC or the AFC championship at that point. But um, PDP odd, uh, Allen's already gone, brother. You took Davis, and you already got sniped on Purdy. So what are you planning there? 
I have no idea what this guy's doing. Oh, Dak, we don't need Dak. Though. Oh, fine. okay. I got scared. I'm like, wait, no, we wait, wait, Dak. wait. We have, we have Allen, so we're good. Okay. <laughs> that scared me. That scared me. I, I don't hate right, the idea good. of going with a one-off a Juju for here sure. for the AFC Championship. <sighs> we need a running back, though, is the other thing, too. We Pollard can go with a one-off sure. Barkley. Pollard. Pollard. Oh yeah, I guess Pollard's available. Yeah, we should just go with I'm trying to mix in. I'm trying to mix in unique one-offs. Is what I'm Real. like focused on with these builds because I think our team is pretty bone stock at the moment. Hear me out. I'm thinking Pollard and and, and Cook or Knox next pick. Yeah, I I think if Barkley were to fall to us, we have to mix in a one-off Barkley or Juju. I don't mind that. The only problem I have with Barkley at this point is he does like theoretically have a, a tough matchup. Uh, in the sense that he does, know, but he has such an elite workload that I really don't care. That's fair. Um, and I guess because you're betting Cowboys, theoretically, you don't really care if the Eagles get upset. So yeah, I'll, I'll let games. you make this next pick because my food is actually here. So I'm going to go grab um, that. Okay, dope. Um, I'm thinking Dawson Knox. You, you kind of need a pass catcher. Um, though, <sighs> nah, nah, ew. between Cook and Knox, I'll let you make this choice, Spicy. They're like back to back for me right now. I don't mind going with Cook because there's less running backs and you could just theoretically, you know, hodgepodge uh, Bills and Cowboys later on. But they're uh, close. Oh, Saquon Barkley fell. Uh, take it, take Barkley. Uh, Bush just mentioned that. I, I didn't even realize he fell. Okay, yeah, uh, we're, we're set there. Barkley did fall. Take him. Yeah. I'm telling you, mark my words, the person that wins this tournament, they're going to obviously have predict, uh, correctly predicted the Super Bowl. But if it's like a bills uh cowboys like we have there's going to be this one minute difference and it's going to be something like barkley like somebody having barkley for that huge blow up game that he had or having you know whatever nfc championship guy it ends up being because you know somebody's gonna something's gonna sink this team a, a build like this in the in the first two rounds before they get to the super bowl if you don't have that guy yeah well like for example now we have upside uh, where we know we're secure at least for the divisional round in our Hopefully running back singletary position falls. that'd be huge uh, or not singletary knocks uh and then pairing like either of them or maybe both of them together uh, uh and if you don't get both you can get dalton schultz exactly so yeah. uh we're in a good spot here uh it's pretty remarkable that we were getting elijah mitchell in the last round prior and now oh my god schultz, wow. oh he's got dak he's got dak yeah good fair. pick yeah fair play um, i think we have to go Knox here over singletary Oh my um, god! Yeah, we gotta go Singletary gotta go single now. Terry. Gotta go Singletary, and then you're probably gonna this have. This guy to has take... no quarterback. Like I don't even know what, he's, know what he's doing. Where's Michael Gallup's ADP? He's probably not much lower than that, right? Gallup. He's probably in the the mid forties, if I were to guess. Yeah, you can star yeah. him for, for yeah, the time for being sure. Too. Yeah, I, I think we go with Singletary here, and then Gallup with the next pick. Um, I'm very curious to see what PD Piot's plan is here. Uh, taking he's just all the gonna, he's gonna play for a min cash. He's gonna take Trevor Lawrence probably as his, or Daniel yeah. Jones as his last quarterback or as his only yeah. quarterback. I mean, if you're playing for a min cash, why are you taking Dawson Knox over Travis Etienne? Fair. Yeah, no, dumb. I think the default for most people. I mean, there's only so many options you can do, but the default for me, at least, if I screw my teams up, would be to would be to stack the Jags <laughs> over the Giants. Personally, I think yeah. the Jags have a better chance of winning than the Giants do. Um, they're pretty close for me. I mean, odds would suggest that the Giants saying. are closer to the to the Eagles, but I I just don't I I don't anticipate the Eagles um, or the Giants going on a run versus the Jags because the Jags have Trevor Lawrence. That's the reason why. Hear me out, uh, McKenzie or Gallup? Probably Gallup, right? Yeah, Gallup. Yeah, I would say Gallup would probably need because to then you I could... don't mind getting unique with a Bills receiver too. Shakir? If we wanted to grab like Shakir or something like that. I I dig that. Or even I Beasley. I dig a Shakir. Um. Beasley, that'd be hilarious. Be interesting. Oh, then we're just taking another cowboy. Yeah. Do you do you uh, hate the idea of taking a one-off AFC Championship McCole Hardman blow-up game potentially if he, too? If he falls past ADP, is how I would pretty much view it. Like, well, because right I think there, we have 43, the leeway to be able to to take a, another one-off if we want one. Forty-three just feels a little high. Like if McKenzie falls, I think that has to be the pick. Um, well, personally. we're going to be picking at 46. So that's what I'm saying he like, he, he's got a chance. He's the sixth person on the board or fifth, fifth. So he's got a chance. I mean, if, if McKenzie does fall, you got to take it there. And he, then uh, has to take a quarterback with 45, right? Probably. I mean, he just grabbed Ingram. He just so. grabbed Ingram. So he's probably going to grab Lawrence. Uh, T Y is a solid pick there source, by the way. Yeah, um, it's a solid pick. We can, he could actually help. So what do we have in the Super Bowl right now? If you want to go to our team, how many uh, guys do we have? Oh, we're, we're way set. We have we got like Alan Pollard. Seven? 
Singletary, Diggs, Lamb, Gallup. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Re- realistically, we probably wouldn't even need to grab one more of our two teams that we stacked up. I think going with a, a one-off would be the smart play, in my opinion. Here. I think I would rather McKenzie here and then hope Slayton falls. Because I, I don't see much of a difference. I think, I think Hardman's... Monster. We've seen Hardman have these monster games already. I think Hardman would be he's, my He's not playing this week, though. He's not playing this week. Oh, is he actually not playing no. this week? No, no I don't he's believe not. So. You're right. So go McKenzie, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I don't mind falls, Hodgins even as a one-off, too. Well, see, that, that was what I was going to say. I don't mind Hodgins, but the thing is, I don't see much of a difference between him and Slayton, so I'd just rather risk it with McKenzie right. and then hope one of them falls. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Because I, I do I do see a, a pretty decent chunk of a difference between McKenzie and uh, Shakir, as much as I like Shakir. Uh, yeah. I'd still see like a, a decent difference there. Whereas with Hodgins and uh, Slayton, I mean, pick one out of the hat. Whoever catches the long touchdown is going to win that gonna win the the battle there if you will right um this is a a great game or a great team by the way yeah brock says i Um, traded for trevor lawrence after that ravens game right before his value shot through the roof yeah you love to see that how healthy are hertz and lane johnson uh they're banged up man they're They're banged banged up up. yeah it's definitely i'm nervous because i have the eagles i put 50 dollars on the eagles to win the super bowl back when hertz got injured um and it was like plus 550 odds or whatever it hasn't really moved much i thought the reason I bet it is because I thought, oh, the Eagles are going to be like plus 300 once Slayton hurts his back. But uh, yeah, go with uh, go with Slayton there, I would say. There's nobody else that like I'm really interested in all that much. Like, Not really. Yeah. It's not like we have like a – if they had like a – if like Zay Jones or something was still on the board, I'd oh. be interested in somebody like that. But Hear me out. If Daniel Jones falls to the last pick, it's unlikely. But if he does fall to the last pick, I actually don't mind mixing that in for Texas. I, I do too because if we get – like what I was kind of talking about before with the guy that took a second quarterback with Mahomes, if we somehow get a bad Allen game and it sinks all of the Allen teams, then we could have a, an Allen team advance, right? 100%, yeah. And I don't think there's like much of a difference between – um like the players we have uh, and ter- like, they're not going to like whatever last player we could have picked. I don't think it's going to like make a huge impact on our, on our team. The, Hayden this Hurst is falling would have been the only guy that I would have said, like we should take for sure. This is by far the best team we build out of these three. A hundred. Yeah. A hundred percent for sure. Like even like, obviously again, we got these super bowl implied here, but even like just as one off, see like we got a lead upside at both obviously with quarterback running back and uh receiver. So, yeah, Saquon, Daniel Jones, and uh, thing there. So we also actually have a backdoor giant Super Bowl too. If they somehow beat the Eagles, yeah, I guess we'd kind of be making that bet that they beat the Eagles and play the Cowboys yeah. at least in the NFC Championship. That would help us a lot. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, I'm really, really hoping that Daniel Jones falls here. That'd be beautiful. Um, though PD this PD might take a second quarterback P- just given PD. he has Lawrence and he P- might be playing for a min cash here. P- PD's scaring me. I mean, if you're playing for a min cash, like, do you really want to take two quarterbacks? Yeah. Oh, he, he did oh. take two quarterbacks, but he took Jimmy what? Garoppolo. That's not a, I mean, that's not a terrible Jimmy. idea. He gets um, Lawrence in the first round, and Purdy has like a shit game, but they still win. Maybe. I just don't think Garoppolo is going to actually be healthy, but hear me out. If Purdy has a shit game, they're not going to win against the Cowboys or Eagles. I'll oh, probably that. not. But I'm just saying, like, maybe you play for that scenario and in, in the case that, like, maybe he's somehow um, ready in time for the Super Bowl or something. 20 pick after ADP Daniel Jones is very, very nice to finish that draft. Yeah. So I guess with this team, we'd be hoping for a couple things. Obviously, Cowboys bill Super Bowl is what we're hoping for. But we'd also be hoping for, even if the Giants don't win, at least a high scoring game. And we'd also be hoping that Daniel or that uh, Josh Allen has a down game. Because if Josh Allen has a down game, but they still win, it's going to sink a ton of Allen teams. Yeah. Or or, uh, not even that, that Allen has a bad game. Or, or just or, Mahomes has a great game. Uh, Burrow and, has a great game. Somebody and else. Daniel Jones maybe rushes in a couple touchdowns. Yeah. Let's just say. Or I mean, like, for, I, actually, we don't want that because we have Barkley. If he throws a couple, you know, f- screen passes to Barkley or uh, hits a long one to Slayton, you know, you have some uh, some coverage there. That I that is a very have a team that have has Purdy as my second quarterback, and I advanced it. Really? Let me see real quick. Yeah, I have a Burrow and a Purdy team. So that's like kind of what we're talking about, right? Burrow didn't have the greatest game in the world. So a lot of Burrow teams are dead, but I had Purdy as my second quarterback. So Purdy advanced those teams for me. So even if Purdy, and I think what I'd be hoping for now is that Purdy has a bad game. Yeah. Because a lot of teams would have advanced Purdy because he was the highest scoring or the second highest scoring between him and Dak quarterback of the slate. But now Burrow goes on the run because a lot of Burrow teams are dead. 
So yep. it's kind of an interesting, t- I kind of like that idea of like two quarterback builds where you, you know, you're betting on one guy having a down game or, or other players having big games and you get that big game included in yours. Yep. No, 100%. Uh, that is a really, really fun team. That was probably one of the most fun teams I think we've built on stream, to be honest. If, okay, somebody's asking if we, if we want to do one more, but I'm going to mute my mic and eat and Danny can do most of the talking. Yeah, that works. What That's fine eating? to me. I'll, I'll chime in, but I won't be discussing about it. So, uh, what are you eating? Uh, Danny knows more than, uh, everybody here that I hate when people talk with mouth, yeah. like food in their mouth and shit. So I won't say anything unless I don't have food in my mouth, but I'm going to eat while Danny kind um, of does it. But just a message in the private chat who you're thinking, and then I'll, 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 I'll you know, elaborate in the chat, if you will. Yeah, uh, Spicy's they, entering they the draft in like three uh, seconds if anybody yeah. wants to get in. Uh, well, I mean, for the most part, we get people ready. Let me just get through some comments then. Uh, how healthy are Hurston Johnson? Yeah, that's a question mark. Evening game is the worst possible slot for the Giants. Uh, Eagles fans tailgating all day are going to be obnoxious. Yeah, it'll be uh, really interesting to see uh, that dynamic. ETN one off since you're betting on the Bills. Maybe you get a Jags Bills uh, AFC Championship. I mean, we did the inverse of that uh, with the Cowboys and um, Giants. Take Hodgins. Uh, we ended up getting Slayton. Uh, T Log going to pull uh, off that Chiefs upset like Andrew Luck did against the 12 and 4 Broncos. Yeah, I remember that, dude. Um, well, in 2014, was that. Uh, that was like the week before. Um, I've already heard the people game, compare right? the Chargers game to Andrew Luck's first playoff game because he the had. Chiefs? Yeah, against the uh, against the Chiefs because he had that terrible first half where he threw like three picks or whatever. Well, and it was he, kind of the same thing Lawrence did. He came back down to what twenty eight nothing, right? Twenty eight. Yeah, I don't think the score was as dramatic as the as twenty four. It was twenty four. It, like, it was it was a lot of points. Yeah, for sure. I might have been twenty four or twenty eight. I'm not exactly. I don't exactly remember what. The, the, the only difference though is that uh, as as much as I love Andrew Luck, obviously I, I think he's better long term. Uh, you know. Like, like where, what luck was like it's still a projection for lawrence he's still got to get there but um the fact is luck did it against alex smith trevor lawrence did it against another top five quarterback in the nfl so uh kudos to that to that comeback i mean yeah it, it was a really really good performance there uh mahomes off the board 101 i think that's just going to be consensus high super bowl odds really really high implied points for them if they make it to the super bowl like yeah uh great pick there mccaffrey 102 Okay, I cannot get on board with that at all. Um, if if people or people are just going to be blessing Josh Allen's at the 104, I will. Uh, I'll take that any day of the week. And you know what? We're blessing Philly Phantom. He's getting his eagle. <laughs> take it. Take a nice little Josh Allen there. He's going to 100 percent go with Hertz. His name's literally Philly Phantom. Like what? Um, take Hodgins. Uh, I mean, we ended up getting Slayton, so it worked out. Um, Jimmy G. Yeah, that was crazy. Appreciate that, Smooth. Appreciate that. Uh, you had a nice team yourself, brother. Uh, bro had to be trolling. Yeah, he had to at that point. He kind of knew. I think the only reason dead. that that guy took McCaffrey 102 is that you hope that you can somehow get McCaffrey, Debo, and Purdy on the same team. Yeah, which is just so hard to do. Um, Brock, uh, that was Luck's first playoff win. His playoff game was against the Ravens' his rookie year. Yeah, the Luck comeback was 28 points. Yeah, I knew that. Um it was a 28 point comeback against the Kansas City Chiefs, what, 2013, I believe. The reason why I think I remember it was. Hmm? What? 2014, I think, right? 2013, I thought, against the Chiefs, right? It might have been played in 2014 then, like in January of 2014, but the 2013 um, season, potentially. Let me see this now. Uh, okay. We're crazy? almost up on the clock, by the way. Yeah, and uh, Diggs, I mean, Diggs obviously is the pick. Like, that's who we yeah, have to pick. Yeah, Harpy. Uh, Diggs is the pick for sure there. And uh, this guy's going to take Brown, most likely. 100% he's going to take Brown. Hurts. He could cuck. Uh, okay, yeah, no, Diggs. Uh, fair, fair play. Yeah, go go with some Diggs here. Uh, kudos to that guy for not being uh, a cuck. Um, <laughs> what, okay, I know it's going to be tough because M Shoe's going to for sure take one of them, but I don't mind mixing in a Niners build uh, now. Uh, and okay, one of them's gone here. If Kittle's gone, it's that that idea is chalked. That idea is complete. Oh, that idea is looking completely chalk right now, Bush. <laughs> yeah, that he's gonna take a niner, and the other guy's gonna take Miles Sanders, and then we're gonna end up with uh, I, I, I plausibly can't take okay, he went with Lamb. That's probably even worse, to be honest, because now this guy's gonna go with Kittle. Oh man, <laughs> people are just crazy. Um, 
Hmm. What are you thinking here? If Kittle falls, I think Kittle's got to be the pick, right? Uh, he doesn't fall. I he fell. We could go with like a poverty Eagles with um with Miles Sanders and and Dallas Goddard, Goddard. and then nothing else. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. we're doing that theoretically, don't we want to go with Gabe Davis first? So we're getting the yeah. most implied upside. Uh, I don't think we're gonna get Sanders though because Philly Phantom picks right after us. Fuck. And he's gonna if we pick Sanders, he's gonna cuck us and take Gabe Davis probably. Yeah. Yeah. If I, I think we probably Sanders. just take Gabe Davis here. Uh, go Sanders. Go Sanders. That's more upside. All right. Fuck. Oh, we, we got it. I feel bad. It, hey, at least it'll look like an auto pick. Because we waited to the clock, right? It'll look like an auto pick. <laughs> Spicy's just laughing in the back. <laughs> hey, Bush, am I crazy to say, Loki, that's a strategy? Uh, if you don't know who to pick, but you know that you're probably going to snipe, snipe the person after you to make it look like an auto pick so the guy doesn't think you're a cuck. It wouldn't matter. I would still do it. <laughs> I would too, but like, you know what I mean? He did go with Saquon though. That uh, that opens us up a little bit. Uh, hopefully Gabe Davis can fall. Um, if Gabe Davis doesn't fall, you're going with Dallas Goddard, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, Star, Star Goddard behind him there. Um God, I can't. <laughs> People are are taking Lamb where he should be going, and I'm 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 not. I know, think we should think I say about as well. Ayuk, yeah, I don't mind that. We could uh, build out. We could theoretically still build out like a, a poverty uh, uh, 49ers uh, bill stack. Gabe Davis would be crucial here. Yeah. Because I mean, theoretically, you would get the Bengals and then the Chiefs, which are. are two very very volatile games like we're expecting a ton of scoring there a ton of big plays so um that'll be that'll be fun uh raven's boat raced us lux rookie year oh yeah i remember that that was the year they made the super bowl right oh god god got it went davis. um you have to go davis i think here um yeah 2012 that would have been the year the uh the ravens won the super bowl for the niners um 24 9 that 24-9 against the Super Bowl champion, honestly, is not that bad of a loss for a rookie quarterback. I'll tell you that. 24-9. Uh, oh, my God. that I remember that. That was the um, that was when Flacco to Jacoby Jones won the game for Baltimore. I still remember. I was at a dinner that day when, uh, when Flacco connects with Jacoby Jones against the one-seeded Denver Broncos and won the game. Because that, that would have been Peyton's first year in uh in Denver, right? 2012, because he had the yeah, next it was the mile high miracle. Yeah, that's and that's bringing back some childhood memories. I'll tell you that. Yeah, the fact that Danny was a child back then is hilarious. I mean, you were basically a child. I was in high school at least. 14. I was 12. Relax. Yeah. <laughs> You're acting like you were like 18, Mr. White. Um, <laughs> um, so <sighs> What do we even do no, here? Uh, James tough. Cook, James Cook, James Cook. Please. Yeah, we have to go James, James Cook, but like, how do we build out a, a secondary stack? Is my question. Um, I mean, you could just. Yeah, I guess the Eagles are so concentrated in terms of targets. We could go. We could go Mitchell and Jennings, maybe. I don't know. Do uh, Singletary here or, or Knox? Singletary, Singletary. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we, need the a, we need back. a running back in the Super Bowl, so we have to go Singletary. If we get sniped on Knox, I'll be upset. I'm not gonna lie. Hopefully Philly doesn't doesn't uh, hit us back. Oh my! Wait, 2012. That's the year the um, the AP uh, near rushing record uh, when he will basically willed Minnesota on his own to the sixth seed, and then they lost to Green Bay. I forgot about that. Um, and then Kaepernick ran for like 200 yards on Green Bay the next week. Luck playoff wins 2013, 2014 against the Bengals and Broncos, 2018 against the uh, against the Texans. Yeah, I, 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 why do I remember that Texans uh, playoff game? Um, who they ended up playing the following round was it New England, I think, right? Who Luck? Luck uh, in 2018 when they made uh, that. No, was I it think they. I'm pretty sure they lost to the Patriots because that was the year the Patriots made the Super Bowl. Yeah, but I thought it would. <sighs> Didn't the Patriots? Who did they beat on the? They beat the Chiefs in the AFC Championship that year. And they beat. I think they beat the Colts in the. Uh, the, the AFC Colts division. Yeah, who would the are Chiefs? You sure? Are you sure the Colts and Chiefs didn't play each other in the in the division? Uh, the Knox. divisional, and they lost. I think it was the Patriots. Uh, I think the who would the Chiefs have played? The Chiefs, Titans, maybe. No, who who would the Chiefs have played in eighteen? Fucking it up. Uh, I'm 
No, you're right. You're right. The Chiefs beat the, the Chiefs. Colts. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, the Patriots beat. Oh, the Chargers. I remember that. Oh, yeah. God. Um, and then obviously New England won in overtime when Frank Clark uh, got called for that offside. So D Ford. D Ford. Frank Clark, D Ford, same fucking shit. They're both uh, overpaid what edges. To Ford? Is he in the NFL still? Didn't he go to the Niners and then just disappear? Yeah, he went to the Niners, got the bag, and then disappeared. <laughs> it's so funny how I confuse Frank Clark or D Ford for Frank Clark when they've basically just been the same player on the Chiefs. Yeah. <laughs> now, Frank Clark's been much more productive than. I think D Ford ever was. He only had that one yeah. good year, right? D Ford. Yeah. Um, is it overkill if we go with McKenzie? Probably. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. How many bills we have? We have five, right? Yeah, that's we enough. Have five. We have to find a way to mix in some other players. We need, we need some high upside. Um, I would say, and then Hardman. probably closing out with a couple of Eagles. Um, well, Harbin's not playing this week, so that's going to kill right. us. Engram. Engram makes well, the. If the he most plays in the sense. AFC Championship, it helps us. Yeah, but we got to get this team to the AFC Championship as currently constructed. It's not making there. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we go or, or Gallup. Or Hodgins, maybe hear me out, Gallup. Yeah, Gallup. we could go Gallup. Yeah, that that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess we could, we could backdoor we could Ty. Grab Ty later too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll be right back. I gotta grab a spoon. This this draft is definitely not uh called as hitting the nuts, but hey. Um. Right, no one got upset. We lost against the Ravens. We were just happy we went eleven and five. And yep, that was the mile. Yep, I remember that. That was that was crazy. Twenty eighteen, the Chiefs killed us. That that is right. It was twenty thirteen and fourteen. You guys lost to the Pats. I just remember you guys played a couple games against the Pats with luck. Uh, that's what I remembered. Was uh, was wasn't one of those years that you guys when you guys played uh, the Pats, you guys got killed by a. Uh, it was Jonas Gray in one of those years, right? In twenty thirteen, we lost to the Patriots. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, man, why can't I remember that Chiefs versus uh, Colts game? Probably because it wasn't really that memorable of a game. But uh, The um, Chiefs won 31-13, so it wasn't really that memorable. That's what I was saying. Oh, my God. Sammy Watkins scored a touchdown. Damian Williams. Remember when Sammy Watkins on the Chiefs was like the hype? There was like, I think there was a three to four year period where everybody was just drafting. Oh, we should probably make a pick here. Sammy Watkins. Uh, no, just the second receiver, whoever the second receiver was for Mahomes and Rogers. Um, uh, walk. I kind of like Hodgins, Hodgins maybe, or do we want to like grab that. Ty and make sure he, like, uh, Hodgins or, or Zay Jones? I, I think I like say. Hodgins here. I like Hodgins. I like Hodgins. You're hoping for a berserker from Philadelphia and, uh, and, and New York. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, do theoretically, we like, uh, we're, do we like we're not one off. Hurst or Jennings, or do we want to just go with Hilton? Hilton or Slayton, yeah. I like Hilton. I actually do like Is Hilton. Hilton on the board still? Check. Um, he should be. There's no way he's going this high, right? Yeah, okay, 56. Okay, we're chilling. Um, Could go with a Berserker uh, downtown Brown, too. No Brown. <laughs> oh, my God. He, he's actually getting, like, no snaps now, eh? Like, do uh, we, are we at all worried about a running back? Because we only have Sanders and Singletary. Maybe one. We could grab like Clyde, maybe. I don't mind that. He's active this week, right? He is. That'll be, also, uh, you guys better sell your Isaiah Pacheco Dynasty shares now because it's probably going to be a three-way committee. Yep. I mean, <laughs> And good, then good they're going to draft somebody or sign somebody in for agency. I mean, good, good thing I don't have any of those shares. I don't, but like I, I was floored when I saw that he was valued like ahead of like Khalil Herberts and like guys that legitimately have like long-term appeal. I'm like, why is Isaiah Pacheco valued over these guys? He's been like mediocre and like an elite situation. Yeah. Um, Lux playoff wins. Yep. Chiefs killed us in the vision. Yeah. Okay. Um, Patriots curb stomped the 12 and 14. Yeah. I remember that actually. Uh, I remember I had a, uh, going into that, um, it was what 41 28. That, that was a that was like hyped up. It was like Philip Rivers versus uh versus Tom Brady. What a barn burner! And then the Patriots just hung 41 on them. Um, I'm super late, didn't see the noti. Appreciate you coming here, rewatching. Yeah, I appreciate that, brother. Um, we got killed by the Patriots in 2014 in the AFC Championship, which is yeah, which was so dumb. Yeah, exactly. It was 38 10. I remember that. shit. Oh, we it's our pick. Well, I guess we take Jennings. I guess Hilton went, huh? 
Oh. You know how I noticed? I was reading chat and I just saw fucking spicy like losing it in the back. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, we. I mean, we could grab uh, Quez, I guess, maybe, and just hope that we sneak in uh, a Quez long touchdown in the Super Bowl <laughs> against the Phils. See, God, that guy sniped all over. We do have wait, wait, Sanders wait, wait, wait. already. Wait, so. wait, 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 wait. Hold up. See the guy who built the Cowboys and the Niners? What? Go back. Who who took Hilton? Wolf? Why? Uh, did he He's just have a, for a min cash and Philly Phantom takes Quez? You hate to see it. Um, is there I any mean, random shitter Eagles that we could take? Should we take Boston Scott? Actually, no, I'm we already down. have Sanders, dude. He's a, he's a, he's a Philly or he's a New York killer. Should we just go Shakir here? This is a min cash. Let's be real. Let's yeah. just go upside. Let's take Shakir. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. This is a bad team. Real. It's a terrible team. This is probably the worst team ever. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, so excited shit. for the Bills Bengals game. Yeah, it's gonna be gonna be dope for sure. <laughs> um, just... Okay, spicy. I need to see this Wolf team because I swear to God, he had, he he built out both Cowboys and Niners. What? Where's his AFC? It was just he doesn't even have. A, oh, he is a quarterback. Never mind. He's got no AFC. He's just got straight got Cowboys. P Ryan just sitting there. <laughs> that's his AFC texture, bro. I Weird. mean, we shouldn't be talking. We got we got sniped on all our our builds. team's dog shit. Also, so yeah. Um, Cody says, "What are the upcoming YouTube videos?" So, um, when we're done here, we are about to record the dynasty wide receiver rankings, top twelve wide receivers coming tomorrow. Uh, that'll be coming tomorrow. Uh, running backs, I believe, coming uh, on uh, Saturday. Before we'll we'll try and get um, that out as early as we can, so it doesn't get interrupted by the games. Yeah, that and was then, supposed. To, was that coming out Saturday or was that coming out for uh, for Monday? And then tight ends was Tuesday. I thought. No. What day is it? <laughs> Today is Thursday. So yeah, we can get no, we can get that one out Saturday. Yeah, either works. Uh, though it will be uh, interesting. Um, I got dip. Yeah, appreciate you, spicy. Appreciate you. I just saw his uh, PM. Yeah. Um. Uh, Devon A chain to play the McKinnon role, please. Yeah, yeah. I saw Brugler had a McKinnon going or not McKinnon. Uh, Devon A chain going to the Dolphins which would be interesting. Obviously kind of just fills the like Raheem Mostert speed back kind of role. I actually think the better play for the dolphins would be to get a hammer because you already have so much speed. Get yourself a, Sharps. a Charbonnet or a Tucker who's going to be a little bit more physical. And both of those guys have good speed for what it's worth. So it's not like they're slow. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Can't wait for, I can't the, wait for the prospect breakdowns. Yeah. I'm, I'm super excited to, to do the tail of the tape. So I'm going to Mexico next Friday. So uh, the week, the first week of February, the first weekend of February will be like low key kind of light on the content. I might do like a live stream or like a pre-recorded video. From yeah. Mexico and I'll be right doing there. stuff too. Yeah. And 100%. Danny will be doing stuff while I'm gone as well. And then as soon as I get back, which would be like the fourth, fifth of February is when the Bijan Robinson tale of the tape, which will be the first one that I do. Absolutely. Because I've been looking forward to doing a tale of the tape for Bijan Robinson since I did Brees Hall's last year, um, yeah. which was the first one that I did. Uh, as well so yeah that'll be really fun i also tinkered with the idea i thought of this today because i know um some other youtube channels do this in our discord of creating like a private server for for patron members that we could do like film breakdowns on like yeah. watch the game because we can't physically watch the film and and break it down on youtube for like copyright, we'll copyright reasons. yeah but we could do it within the discord which would be kind of cool as like a patron benefit at least maybe for some of the more divisive process prospects maybe not for like Bijan because everyone knows he's good but when we break down like Quentin Johnston for example who's like more of like a a divisive prospect or like a Jackson Smith and Jigba because everybody thinks he can just be a slot receiver um those could be kind of fun if we do those in the discord or something um me and Danny yeah. could both hop on there and just kind of oh break down I'm so percent. down put some film on obviously we'll, we'll have access to we'll be able to have access to it and then we could just kind of go through stuff that we see uh together and that'll be fun yeah, I mean, uh, Bijan is uh, is absolutely going to beat ETN's uh, prospect grade, which is currently in the new prospect system that I have right now. Derby one, the highest grade that I've given a running back prospect because I refined my system in 2021. Um, so ETN was the highest grade that I gave, followed by Najee Harris, Javante Williams, and Brees Hall. Um, since 2020 or since 2021, I didn't. Oh, since when I graded, I had Taylor RB one in 2020, but. Um, my process was like flawed and like didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And I mean, we didn't really mark, start making content until 2020, like after that draft anyway. Yeah. So I didn't really know what I was doing. And I mean, the process that I had spit out Henry Ruggs wide receiver one. So, I mean, yeah. I had to refine it after that, obviously. Yeah. 
Um, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good luck to your boys this weekend, Danny. Fuck that. Appreciate that, Nate. Um, it's going to be an absolute game. Like, and I'll tell you that right now. If the Cowboy, okay, I know I'm not projecting. It's the game I'm most excited for, for sure. Even 100%. though I'm not a Cowboys or a Niners fan, it's going to be an absolute classic. I think, uh, personally, um, obviously, I'm, I'm not. You know, knock on wood, I'm not like saying this is what's going to happen. But hypothetically, if the Cowboys were to make the Super Bowl, it would probably be the most narrative-driven path of all time. First game, you're facing the goat, possibly his last game in the NFL. Second game, you're playing against a team that knocked you out last year that you have a big rivalry with over the past 50 years. And then the NFC Championship, you'd be playing against your division rival. So, like, if you or could, like... your other division rival, if the Giants win. But the, your division rival regardless. That's yeah. what I mean. So, like, no matter what happens, it's like, if they were to do that path, it would probably be, like, the most, quote-unquote, fairy-tailed uh, Super Bowl run we've probably seen in the modern era. <laughs> Brock says get get TY a ring smoke that Niners pack for sure uh, I need to see these guys like Zay Flowers and Josh Downs they're getting hype but I don't know if they're good Josh Downs, Downs is absolutely good. is good but uh Flowers <laughs> I don't know Flowers is good he's got a you know a decent production profile he's a senior but he had good production as a sophomore and as a junior and and uh, kind of blew up this year I'm not convinced that he's going to be a, a great great player I see people taking him in like the first round of like rookie mocks I'm like I don't think that people should do that I think People are going to see like recent years and be like, oh, these like early second round receivers are like a play. But this year's receiver class isn't as good as deep, especially as other classes. And the running back class is deeper and better than the previous two running back classes. So I think early second round picks should be probably better spent on, you know, Charbonnets and Bigs B's and Tuckers and Evans and guys like that. Yep. 100%. Uh, what's Bijan good at? Everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's like realistically the only thing that I've seen from Bijan because I've pretty much watched his film already because I watched every game this year and most of the games last year of Texas I would say the only thing that I see out of Bijan that is semi concerning is he's not the most physical in pass protection and he also um sometimes can have the Barkley the Barkleyism where he kind of like looks for the home run sometimes that's what I was just gonna say I feel like sometimes he relies on his athleticism and his physical talents too much rather than just kind of taking what's given to him which again sometimes it'll make you know a highlight real play but at the same time sometimes in the end in the next level you kind of have to hone that in um I saw an interesting comp I think it was uh Noah uh no more parties that made this comp but uh he basically said from like a production receiving skill set size profile like David Johnson's probably the best comp for him like prime oh David God. Johnson would be fucking like perfect, right? Yeah. And I mean, they're they're similar size guys, like six foot, 220, 225 pounds. I think about my my old comps when I first started watching prospects, and they're just hilarious. Like, do you know who my Barkley comp was? Did I ever tell you who it was? Hmm. Bo Jackson. I don't like. I don't think that's crazy. Like because I mean, it's we're just talking so funny because it's not even I like mean, Bo Jackson's just blas blasphemous to compare to anybody. But like, I think if we were gonna compare a running back to Bo Jackson, I think Barkley is kind of a, a good. <laughs> and player. then like Jonathan Taylor was probably compared to Saquon Barkley with a worse receiving profile. <laughs> that was my comp for, for Jonathan Taylor with Saquon. Yeah, <laughs> with a worse receiving profile. Yeah. Yeah. I, I my comp. I've kind of stuck to this the whole time. I think my comp for Bijan is a more athletic Dalvin Cook. He's kind of been that's kind of been my comp for him the whole time. Um. I, he reminds me of early career Zeke. That's kind of what I saw from him. Where like when Zeke came in, I mean, this was a guy legitimately taken fourth overall. Obviously, you know, you're looking at Zeke now and you're going to be like, well, that's blasphemy. That's slanderous to, to Bijan to even consider that. But dude, when Zeke came into the NFL, this was a legitimate 4-4-5 four, four, type of guy. Uh, can do things out of the backfield. I mean, he was taking screen passes to the house. Uh, just think of that 2016 game against the Pittsburgh Steelers where he took like an 88-yard screen pass to the house. When Zeke was in his prime, this was like a legitimate freak athlete. And now the guy just uh, goes to Cabo and, I mean, yeah, loses I think, I think a young Zeke is a good comp for Bijan as well. Yeah. I think he's going to draw a lot. I think Zeke, Saquon, like those type of running backs, maybe JT's here and there. I think the that, power. That, that's probably going to be the consensus like people have uh have yeah. on uh B. John robinson yeah for sure uh Zowers, uh, flowers didn't look great but may get the draft yeah no it, it should be interesting for sure uh bo had a, yeah like bo bo jackson wasn't he like a four two two guy or four one eight apparently he stupid. reportedly ran in the four ones yeah i heard i think it was four one eight that i heard which yeah, is like which is insane at like 230 pounds or which whatever is the, the dumbest speed score of <laughs> the history of the nfl his weight adjusted speed score would be like 180 
Dude. And like JT's is like 135 or like 129, and it's like extremely elite. It's like literally like like top of the line elite. Bo Jackson was six foot one, two hundred and thirty pounds. Obviously, you know, went first overall, but apparently he got reported for running a four one eight. Yeah, which is insane. I mean, Deion Sanders said he could run in the four ones too, which I don't I honestly don't doubt. He was like probably one of the fastest players to ever play. So um yeah. We need to hear all the old comps. I'm trying to think of the other ones that I had. So in that 2018 draft class, that was like the first time I ever like watched players. And like, I, again, I really didn't know what I was doing. So take these uh, with a, a grain of salt, but I know Barkley's was, was Bo Jackson. I'm pretty sure Sony Michelle's was Le'Veon Bell. I'm pretty sure is who I comped him to. Cause uh, he was my RB two in that class. Devastatingly you, enough. I'm pretty sure you had, uh, was it Devonte Smith to Keenan McCardell? You had somebody to Keenan McCardell. Uh, you I did. I don't think it was Smith though. Who the fuck did, was it? Um, no, it was 2020. Oh my god, was it? Um, I remember you writing it up. Yeah, I remember me writing it up too. Now I can't remember who it is. Fuck. Um, who else was he, in the 2020 class? <laughs> CD Lamb, uh, Jerry Judy, uh, obviously Henry Ruggs, Justin Jefferson. Jaylen my Ruggs Riker. comparison was Terry McLaurin. My Judy, my Judy comparison was Ke- Keenan McCardle. That's, That's what it was. was. Yeah. Who who was your Lamb comparison? I think I remember. Uh, I can't uh-huh. remember who. It You're was. not gonna like it. Huh. My Lamb comparison. So that year. Uh, Devonte Parker was a top twelve fantasy wide receiver. So that's no, who I you did not. That's who I comped Ceedee Lamb to. Was like <laughs> a so more athletic Devonte Parker. They were so different though. But like body control wise, and like oh, like uh, obviously that, Parker can't separate now. But like he, that season, he was actually pretty good. But the thing that I think that uh, why I was always like super high on Lamb, uh, even like before he was a cowboy. Oh no no no, dude! My comp for Keenan McCarter was Justin Jefferson. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Jerry yeah, was Judy like, was Ocho Cinco. That's who I comped Jerry yeah. Judy to. Um, and then C.D. Lamb. Uh, the the reason the reason why I was always high on him. Even I mean, he was the first article I wrote. I fell in love with C.D. Lamb when I started watching him. He was probably one of the best after the catch receivers I have ever seen play college football. And I'm not even saying that lightly. I, I thought that his was crazy. catch ability was good, but I, I think people he was reacted insane. a little bit to it. Like it was the <laughs> highest after the catch grade I gave in the class, but I thought people were like saying it was like like generational after the catch ability. I was like, that's a little aggressive. I don't know, man. Like he's at least one of the three to five best after the catch receivers in the NFL right now. Like him, Chase, and AJ Brown are like the ones that come to mind. Yeah, I mean Debo's better than D- Debo, better Debo, 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 Debo. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, Debo, Debo. Um, Debo. Yeah, there's there's definitely some dudes there for sure. It, I don't know what it is. Obviously, you know, the, 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 the route running, the separation, it's just beautiful to watch. Don't get me wrong. Like the outside player, but I just love a receiver where they can catch the ball and you know that they're getting five, six plus yards right afterwards. Like they, they transition their, their, their uh, ability to catch the ball with just putting their foot in the ground and just going like I, some of both. I, I mean, I, I, by the way, too, I forgot to mention Tyreek Hill and Jalen Walter are absolutely up there yeah. in terms of after the catch too. So there's a, yeah. there's a, a short list of like eight. I still think like a healthy Chris Godwin is one of the better after the catch receivers yeah. in the league. That's um, one. I want to just, I, I got to toot my own horn here because I ran the, the correlation model. Um, hey, hey, there you go. So for those of you guys that are math nerds, you probably know what this means, but R squared is basically just means correlation. And it's like, you know, the obviously perfect correlation would be 1.0. Um, and draft capital to running back and just positional success in general is about a 0.3 corollary. And then Lance Zerline, who uh, our buddy Ron Stewart likes to reference film grades from a lot of the time, his um, running back rate specifically, I believe they're between 0.4 and 0.45. I couldn't get an exact number, but it's somewhere around there. So I kind of just like went in between. Um, but basically, I looked at my own grades the last two years, which is, you know, since I, I refined my process because I wasn't really, I didn't really know what I was doing 2018, 19, and 2020. And my own grades, uh, which are available in our Patreon for like my historical grades databases for all positions. I didn't test this for all positions, just running backs, because I know running back has been my most successful position. Um, They've been pretty good. Like, I mean, aside from, you know, Michael Carter, who I just absolutely loved coming out of North Carolina. I thought he was a great prospect. Uh, Isaiah Spiller last year. Um, The one that annoys me is I had Ramondre Stevenson much higher uh, when I watched his film. But then when I dug into more of his numbers and I heard other people's opinions on him, I let that kind of affect my own opinion, which I shouldn't have. I think I had Ramondre Stevenson graded like on par with Kenneth Gainwell on film that year. 
Uh, but uh, I, I let people talk me out of him, unfortunately. And then Kenneth Gainwell was the opposite. I let people talk me into him. Uh, no, I'm sorry, real quick. How was Zamir White? 17th on the keep trade cut value so he's list. 17th in terms of this draft class not like oh. overall running back so the, oh, this is the it. rank among the draft class also my correlation would be a little higher too if Brees hall wasn't the rb1 which he shouldn't be right now he should be the rb like three or four from this draft class because i absolutely would take etn and walker ahead of him right now yeah that's fair um but yeah that's that, i thought that was interesting because i just wanted to, to to run the numbers and see how you know, correct those, this, those actually were. And I, I beat draft capital and I beat Lance Erline. So that's pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's dope. I'd have to test wide receiver because I have some huge misses in there. Uh, like, uh, Tamori and Terry and, uh, and David Bell so far have been pretty big. Whoever's my wide receiver eight this year, just assume they're going to be a bad player because my wide receiver eight in the last two draft classes has been, uh, um, a, a murderer, either a murderer in Tamori and Terry's case, or, uh, like the second worst graded PFF receiver this year in David Bell's case. It feels like of all time. <laughs> yeah, he had a horrible season, man. So, Dude. um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna head off here. Thank you guys for joining us. If you've been around here this whole time, again, you know, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, it's back to Cody's question. He said, uh, "What are the upcoming YouTube videos?" I'll just kind of repeat what we said. We're gonna have wide receiver dynasty rankings top twelve uh, coming for you guys tomorrow. Running backs hopefully on Saturday morning before those games kick off. Tight ends on Monday, and then uh, we'll probably get into some dynasty decisions next week because a lot of you guys have been asking about those as well. Um, so we might even do like two or three, maybe even more of those videos in a row, uh, for dynasty decisions. So we'll, uh, we'll definitely 100%. keep you posted. If you guys are patrons, of course, feel free to reach out and, uh, submit your teams and all that stuff. And we'll bank those away for you. So, um, yeah, with that being said, peace out. We'll talk to you soon.